This video looks at organising your EndNote records into groups. We'll look at creating groups so you can keep related references together, organising these into group sets and finally having EndNote create some groups for you using smart groups. So we'll start with creating basic groups. So in this library I've currently got 93 records, all of which are currently unfiled. This means they haven't yet been added to a group. There are two main ways to add references to a group. Either you can create the group first and then just drag references into it, or you can select the references and tell EndNote to create a new group or add them to an existing group. You can see that the groups section here on the left hand side currently has two headings that say My Groups. The top one, in capital letters, is the section heading and can contain the groups, group sets or smart groups that I mentioned earlier. The lower one is a pre-made group set where your custom groups, that is your own simple groups, will appear. You can right click and rename this if you wish. If I click back onto my unfiled references, the first thing I'm going to do is create a custom group for all of those references that may have some missing information that I want to just be able to go and check when I have the time. So I can do that by first of all selecting those references. So I just click on the top one there which could be missing an author. It may be that there isn't one but I want to go and check that at a later stage. The same with the one below, so if I hold my control key down, I can click on that and it will add it to the selection. I'll do that for those top four ones that have no author. There's also some references lower down that seem to be missing a date. So I'm going to select those as well. Again, I'd held my control key down and that, as you can see, if I scroll up slightly, has added those to the selection. So I'm just going to go down and every time I see one without a date, I'm going to do control and click. Now that they're all selected, I can just right click on any of them, any of the highlighted ones, and do add references to and you'll see there is an option to create a custom group. Once I have some custom groups in here, they would also appear in this list and I could add directly to them. I'm going to do create custom group and you'll see those eight references have gone into that. Now currently it's just called new group, so I need to go over to the groups pane on the left hand side, just right click on that, choose to rename the group and I'll call it information missing. Now as you can see that the unfiled list has gone down to 85 records because eight of them are now in the information missing group. I'm now going to create some thematic groups. So I'm going to right click where it says my group and choose to create the group. I'm going to call this one university level because although I searched for papers on visual literacy, some of them apply to school level and some to university level. So I'll create that and go back to my groups again, create group again and this time I'm going to call it school level. Now I'm not actually going to go through and work out which is which of these, I'm just going to randomly assign them to these groups. But I'm going to go to the All References tab to do this because I want to include those references that I've already put under the Information Missing group. An individual reference can be in more than one group. So I'm just going to select the first page full here. So this time I'm going to hold my shift key down to select all of the first lot and I'm going to just drag those onto the school level group. 
you see 17 have gone into there, including some of those that were in the other group as well. Scroll down further and select some more. And these I'll drag into university level. And I'll just randomly assign the rest of them. So there you can see I now have no unfiled references. They're all in at least one of these three groups. If you add a reference to the wrong group, then you can just delete it from that group. If I just select that reference there, I can just press the delete key on my keyboard and it has removed it from that group. It hasn't deleted it from EndNote completely, it has simply made it unfiled. I can then select that and drag it into the correct group. It's also worth pointing out that when you are in a group, then using the add a new reference button adds that reference to that particular group. If you want to add it to your library but not in a particular group, then you would click on all references first before you do the add a new reference. Now we'll look at organising these into group sets. If you have a lot of groups, it's useful to organise them further into group sets. So again, if I right click on my groups, I can do create group set. And here I could have my visual literacy group set. And these two groups here could be moved into that group set just by dragging them onto the title. So there you can see it's organising that better. You can create as many group sets as you like. So I could organise by the chapters of my thesis by creating a group set first and then right clicking on the group set heading to create the groups within. And again, select the records you want and drag those into the groups. If you've got a lot of existing groups and you want to organise them better, consolidate them into fewer groups, then there is an option if you right click on my groups to create groups from groups. Here you can see you can give it a group name and then you can include the references from various other groups. I'm not going to do this now because this library hasn't got many groups in it. And finally, we'll look at smart groups. One really useful feature is the ability to create smart groups. This is where EndNote can actually put things into the groups for you. So for example, you may want to have groups for years. You may want to have groups for particular journals. And EndNote can automatically do this for you. So again, I right click on the heading. This time I'm going to do create smart group and I have to fill in various criteria. So I'm going to give this the name of the journal and I'm going, a lot of these are from the Journal of Visual Literacy and it's nice to be able to see those separately. So there I'm looking for the journal and I'm going to type the name of that again. I can then create that and you can see at the top there I've now got a group called Journal of Visual Literacy and EndNote has automatically populated it. Anytime I bring a new reference in that fulfills those criteria it too will automatically be added to that group. So I could also do this perhaps by um, year so I could do create a smart group 
and I'll put it in for, uh, I'll say, recent papers. And instead of author, I can just change that to year. Instead of contains, I can use a range of years. So I can say is greater than or equal to, say, 2018, and create that. I could, of course, also include other rows. So I could have had 2001 to 2005, 2006 to 2010, etc. But I'm just keeping this one quite simple. And there I can see that 50 of my papers were all fairly recently published. So groups are a really useful way of being able to organise your records.